there and welcome to Providence Hill Presents Exit Stage Right with Martha Sullivan. It is my pleasure today to be with you and talk um, today about what's going on in the world and the economy and all those other great things. This is a show, Exit Stage Right is the show where we're going to talk about ways that you can build, buy, and sell your business so you can indeed exit stage right into your next adventure whenever that time comes and meet your financial goals. This, whether you own your own company now, you hope to in the future, or you are a kicktail leader in your company. Here, we're going to talk about the business of business and ways that you can set up your organization and yourself for your best and brightest future. I'm Martha Sullivan, and I am your host. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Exit Stage Right. You know, in the past week, Elon Musk has been in the news. Yes, I know Mr. Musk is a bit of a controversial figure out there these days. Some people think he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Other people, maybe not so much. But regardless of how one feels about him, he is one of those types of people that is an outside of the box kind of thinker. and behavior, but we won't go there. Anyway, anyway, he thinks outside of the box and he's a bit of a renegade. And so as I read in one um, magazine article um, this past week, somebody very aptly said, said, when everybody else is zigging, Elon zags. He, he goes the other way. And very often he is right about um, the zigs and and the zags. And so it's with that that you, we think about um, our, our topic today. <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me. So in the past week he announced, <clears throat> Excuse me. He announced and then actually walked back a little bit. Um, he announced a 10% cut in his workforce. And in particular, um, that reduction in staff was going to be predominantly across Tesla's salaried personnel, noting that he was also going to be increasing the hourly staff, but that he was going to do a 10% cut in his salaried team because at, at various points over the last few years, he felt that they had overhired and overstaffed. Between the lines and in other commentary um, that he has made, he also you know, is saying that he's reading the tea leaves and he believes that we're heading for a recession. And there are other economic voices other than Elon Musk that are talking about this. It's not like he is an economist, but nonetheless, he is one of the few pessimists currently in the automotive industry. Um, most of the other auto execs are feeling very bullish about um, the prospects for the auto industry over 2022 and into 2023. This got me thinking, um, and hopefully it gets you thinking a little bit as well about recessions and how does one best prepare um, and adapt in advance and throughout a recession? Um, who tends to fare well in a recessionary environment and who might um, find themselves under the gun as if we didn't need to be under the gun um, again after the last to two and a half years. So, you know, I did a little bit of digging along the way and um, uh, found an interesting angle that I wanted to share with you um, in this topic. Now, you may recall um, back from your uh, school days, a dude by the name of, um, of Maslow, as in Maslow's hierarchy of um, <clears throat> hierarchy of needs. And in 
the hierarchy of needs, the the premise um, goes, oh my goodness, it goes way, way, way back. And it's actually drawn from the field of psychology. And at its core, um, was it Albert, I think was maybe his first name, Albert Maslow believed that there is this hierarchy of needs that we all have. And that until the base level of the needs are met, you can't really move on to the next level up the, the pyramid and find fulfillment um, or achieve those higher levels of within the um, the hierarchy of needs and the 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 five higher uh, the five levels excuse me um, within the hierarchy of needs are your basic. Uh, physiological and physical needs, your need for safety and security. Once you feel safe, you can pursue love and belonging and self-esteem and ultimately the self-actualization. Never really quite sure what they mean by that, but uh, we'll talk about that too. Um, anyway, um, you know, the basic premise is that, for example, when we are scraping um, for our basic needs, our food, clothing, a place to rest our head, we don't necessarily give a flip about um, learning or going to a fancy restaurant or our, our nails done and pretty. Um, we're really prioritizing getting food in our belly and having a safe place to um, put our head down and having warmth and clothes on our back type of type of thing. We don't prioritize things like education. We don't prioritize finding our one true love. We really are, are in, in essence, at that level, the concept is that we are fighting for a life and we need to feel confident that we have that level um, under control and taken care of before we can really think about um, having a greater sense of safety and security. Um, for example, you know, you, you move, at, at that point, you might be able to move from living in a, um, you're able to start thinking about even moving from a basic shelter Maybe it's a homeless shelter, or maybe you're living in your car, or maybe it's um, you know a, a less than ideal apartment that you're you're renting. You can then think about, okay, we've got this under control. Now maybe we can move out of this living situation into one that is more safe and more secure. Um, and then once you have that sense of, of safety and security and housing, then you're able to start thinking about enhancing um, education or really focusing on ensuring and helping your kids with school or things along those lines. I think it is when you think about a recession and we think about our businesses, because after all, that's what Exit Stage Right is about, is focusing on businesses. I think Maslow's hierarchy really does have um, a place in business and a, a way of thinking about it in terms of, well, how do our purchasing habits shift as we go through Maslow's hierarchy. And I found this in a great article um, put out ironically by the guys that do um, NetSuite, Suite, which is a software program. But I found this next uh, depiction uh, in an article and I love it. I just love it because I think it really helps us um, visualize what, um, what and how Maslow's hierarchy translates into market forces and what it might do in a period of recession. 
So you might want to take a snapshot of this picture and uh, refer back to it at an, another piece of time. But let's kind of break it down and, and talk about it as it relates to our business lives and um, what uh, the influences in a recession or, uh, or not. So the mo most basic needs are physiological needs, you know, where we are, we're buying our food, we're getting our uh, basic um, healthy beverages, we are getting health, health care, um, minimum rudimentary um, housing, your basic household needs like cleaning supplies, or um, if you have small children at home, your baby supplies. Um, those things are all in the, the very foundational level of the physiological needs. We also, um, interestingly, they categorize our comfort needs and our vices down here as well, because during an, in a recessionary period or during periods of stress, ergo think 2020, we turn to our we turn to our vices or turn to comfort foods, whether it be junking out on uh, one of my personal favorites, juju juju fruits, um, or uh, you know we saw in uh, the economy liquor and and uh, beer and wine sales uh, grew during the pandemic. Those also fall into that category and tend to be more recession proof. When you think about safety, things um, that fall into that category would be home repair or um, remodeling, even though that might be a little bit more discretionary and up above, uh, your financial services, your auto, keeping your, your car in good working order um, so you can get to and from work, or if you're in a dangerous situation, you can get out of it your utilities um, and basic education um, for the kids, that falls into the safety needs and the purchases that tend to weather a recession relatively well. So you, if your company um, is one that services those um, needs, you'll probably be in pretty good shape. Now, as we move up the pyramid, we're going to find that the, the, these categories tend to start being more discretionary. You think about love and belonging. Okay, well, what went sideways during the pandemic? Weddings, life events. Well, that was all driven, <laughs> excuse me, driven by the health crisis that we were facing. But at the same time, um, if you're facing a recession and the cost and inflation, the two combined, and you're planning your wedding and getting the food cost quotes currently and seeing prices that are, you know, it may feel like $500 for a piece of wedding cake, you're going to scale back because you only have so much of a budget that you can spend on wedding and life events. You may scale back significantly and not do um, the, the full on um, wedding approach or where you might have, let's say a, a critical anniversary, critical, I shouldn't say critical, that's not really what I meant, a big anniversary that you're celebrating. You know, maybe it's a 30th anniversary or a 50th anniversary. You might opt to have a uh, gathering at your home instead of a big party out at, um, at uh, the local restaurant that is your favorite. So we start seeing the discretionary purchases like going out to dinner at a fine restaurant or getting tickets to the theater or going to a movie playing at the casino might be a splurge as opposed to something that is done on a regular basis if that is one of your recreational activities. We start to see those feel a little bit of a pinch in a recessionary period. They are not as recession proof. The esteem category is where you'll see travel and tourism. They, they uh, you might, um, 
get new furniture or you might refinish the furniture in your home. There might be other leisure activities, leisure vehicles, maybe a boat or a jet ski or let's see, a motorcycle as opposed to a, a car. Those types of, of leisure vehicles and leisure activities in a typical recession tend to draw back. And so if you are operating in that market, you tend to see um, things slow down uh, a tick or two. Now, this recession, um, everything that I've been reading is there is so much pent up demand for travel and running away from home, really, when you talk about it, running, get me out of here. Um, there's a lot of, of pent up demand that people are basically saying, screw it, I'm going anyway, even though gas prices are six bucks a gallon. I just don't flip and care. I'm out of here. Now, we'll see how long that lasts, but there's a fair amount of, of um, demand that it may push through um, a, a recessionary drawback um, just despite the, the increase in prices and the squeeze on um, the purchasing power of a dollar. Uh, and it also depends on how long the recession lasts. I certainly do not have a crystal ball on that. So it'll be interesting to watch if that really um, does have a drawback and, and in this recession, if assuming it does come to pass, if that really does um, drop or if the demand just pushes through it, which would be very unusual in, in a recession that we, uh, keep doing the travel and, and the um, tourism and the leisure activities. Now, purchases of boats, purchases of jet skis, leisure vehicles, um, that may slow down, but um, I, I do think that there's a heck of a lot of pressure for people saying, nope, get me, get me out of here, I'm going. So the last section, the tip of the iceberg, if you will, is the self-actualization component. And what the industries that, that we see here are like the um, seminars and conferences, construction um, and home remodeling tend to be at more, um, well, they tend to be highly discretionary as well as certain um, personal services, like maybe a personal trainer if you're into athletics, or um, maybe um, if you have a maid service at home, that might be considered um, in the self-actualization category. You have somebody come in to help you with the house cleaning because you yourself need to have time for yourself for other activities that might be considered discretionary and put on pause for a period of time. If you are working in that industry and that's your business, you need to be aware of that and, and hedging, how, how's that gonna work? So um, I'm going to stop the share um, here, uh, but also wanted to announce it, which I don't normally do. If you still wanted to get a snapshot of this particular slide, now's a good time to do it before I go click in one, two, three, click. So I do want to keep talking about this because I think it's really, um, it's a really important thing for us to be considering um, in anticipation of what may be indeed a recession. Uh, and so if we break it down from another angle um, and, and think about it from your world and what business you're in, where might you fall in that hierarchy? And I, I was thinking about it from the perspective of, I know many of, of us business owners in the Win Win Women Network, um, we're personal coaches or we are in personal services. 
Um, maybe it's marketing services, or maybe you're a burnout recovery coach, or something along those lines. Now, those um, I would consider to be services that are going to be higher up in Maslow's hierarchy, more discretionary, and therefore they may be more vulnerable to a pullback. Historically, they would be in a recession more vulnerable. Um, and, but yet at the same time, I think an argument can be made in both of those examples that the, a recession is the exact wrong time for your customers to be pulling back on those services. Because let's face it, a recession and inflation creates pressure on both of your um, respective target customers in terms of the burnout recovery um, example or the marketing services example. So in the case of, of the burnout recovery, inflation um, and the, a, a potential recession is not going to help relieve the pressure on your client that they may be feeling. They're, they're likely going to be feeling more pressure um, and at greater risk of burnout. Maybe they're feeling like they have to get another job or pick up more hours at work. Uh, and so they're putting themselves in a vulnerable position and they need your services even more to help them figure out how to stay grounded and balanced as they navigate their own challenges within um, their, their world. With marketing services, recessions are often the time that marketing is viewed as being very discretionary and thus it's cut. But there are studies that show that that is indeed the exact wrong time to pull back on marketing and brand visibility. There was a study, a fairly significant study done in Harvard Business at the Harvard Business School and, and reported in the Harvard Business Review about how um, those people, those companies that stayed in the market and uh, stuck with their uh, marketing services and brand visibility fared much, much better coming out of a recession than those um, businesses that cut and scaled back and hunkered down. And <clears throat> so the premise is along um, that, that by staying top of brand, uh, visible and top of mind, that clients, even though they may not have the money to pull the trigger on your services during the recession or during the economic pullback, you will be top of mind when they do have the discretionary resources um, to come back and um, buy your products and services. So there's, there's a method to the madness of staying visible throughout that that period. Um, and then there are those interest, uh, industries that I think are actually kind of contrary, or at least counterintuitive to what, what Maslow is talking about here. I, you know, I think about they had beauty up in, um, up in the upper echelon under esteem. And uh, you know, we may see some pullback in that. I, I mean, I can, I get it. You might do a box job instead of going to the salon to get all your coloring done. But dollars to donuts, you're going back to the salon at least every once in a while to maybe get those highlights or uh, at least to get get a haircut. So it won't be going away totally. And I. I can't cite a study, but in the back of my mind, I remember hearing a study about when the going gets tough, what do we do, ladies? <laughs> we go to the salon. There are certain things that are just non-negotiable for us. And I think um, some of that self-care uh, tends to whether it may be a little bit better than, than others um, do. Um, there are other market forces at play um, in this particular time that we're facing. Yes, inflation is there. There are the supply chain issues that are, are driving up um, prices. There are corporate policies 
and strategies that I think are also fueling um, the inflation. Um, but there are, are other forces that are, that may do a, actually do a head fake, if you will. So let's, the one that comes to my mind is home repairs and remodeling. Now, if you are working in this industry, if this is your niche, you know that you are currently still working your tail off and you very likely have a significant backlog um, of work that was created during the pandemic and the disruptions in your supply chain. You have a bunch of jobs that are just waiting for you to show up and do the work. For example, my, my neighbor down the street um, is putting, up a, putting on a screen porch to her house. She signed the contract for the screen porch literally 12 months ago, and they just poured the foundation. She's fingers crossed that the, the porch will be done in time for them to yet enjoy it yet this summer, but there's no guarantee. So we're talking about a 12, 13 month backlog for that particular remodeler. And um, they selected a, a reputable remodeler, but not one of the, you know, the big names out there. So throughout the, the market, and, and players, everybody is super, super busy. Now we're seeing in the news that new home starts and home sales are starting to cool off a little bit um, as in interest rates go up a smidge and as some of the, the um, investment funds that have been scooping up real estate have put a significant pause on their buying activity. And yet there's still a huge pent up demand for home purchases. A lot of um, buyers, particularly interested first time buyers, uh, dip their toe in the market and immediately stepped back because the the water was too hot it was it, the prices were too high they were being countered um you know by insane counter offers that they couldn't compete with so there is pent-up demand but the market actually needs to cool for those folks to be able to step back into the market so you know, we're in many recessions, it comes down significantly. It may or may not this time around. It'll be very interesting to, to see what happens um, in that particular market. You know, if, if you're in any of any industry, actually, I was going to say, if you're in any of the, these industries, like the construction or um, a, a business where supply chain issues have caused a big disruption or you are more project driven, I think it's important to think about and examine your demand flow. And what is it that, that you are facing? Um, is this, are your supply chain constraints starting to show signs of easing up? Will you potentially catch up just in time for a recession to curb demand for your products and services? You know, if we think of and stick with the construction and remodeling example work, um, while your, the hammers aren't likely to quiet in 2022 and even possibly into 2023, the requests for bids may cool down those may slow down. And if that happens, that was just a cat voicing his opinion over there. I don't know if you, that picked up on the mic. But anyway, if that happens, your future pipeline is what's going to be threatened. And, and this happens in my line of work too. This happens in consulting services all the time. In project-driven businesses, we need to continually be on the hunt because if we're not feeding the beast, we're not going to be eating. Uh, we eat what we kill. So we have to 
keep hunting. So we are indeed building that future pipeline. And this is a prime example of why pulling back on marketing um, initiatives and efforts is such a bad idea during a recession, because it, 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 it can really bite you in the tail um, when the recession uh, eases and you need to get some momentum back into your um, activities and your sales. So while it may be time, a good time to catch your breath if, if um, you're, you've got insane uh, client lead times like the remodelers. Um, so you can shorten um, your, your lead times for future customers, but you also wanna be very, very careful and, and think strategically so that you're not inadvertently setting yourself for a future drought. Now, regardless of what industry you're in, if you, we can go back to this screenshot at, 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 at a time when you can actually think about what the implications are for your company, for your industry, and think through what it means for your particular revenue flow um, and demand flow and margin flow. Um, you know, we don't have time to dig into the implications on margins, but that's also something to be thinking about and managing. Um, <clears throat> but I, I encourage you to go back and think about ways that you can protect your revenues um, from the impact of uh, a recession and actually start taking steps now um, to do something about it. For example, how sticky is your revenue? Are there ways that you can deepen your customer's reliance and routine on you? For example, um, is, is there a possibility that you could encourage them to pre-book appointments to maybe offer a modest discount um, for booking multiple appointments or maybe even a prepay? discount where they buy 10 sessions today and get the 11th one at half off or something like that. Are there other products that you can consider um, adding to your lineup that would encourage them to come back? Other products, other services? Think about ways that you can build up recurring um, revenue streams or other reasons for them to um, come back and, and shop with you. Do you know where your marketing dollars are most effective? If you're not going, um, if, if you can avoid cutting off the marketing spend, it's really important that you are getting the biggest bang for your bucks. So spend some time and examine what you can learn from your marketing data. And, and become more targeted with your marketing spend so you're getting the most ROI and achieving your goals. Um, so you are top of mind for that customer that you want when they have the discretionary dollars that they will be thinking of you and your company first. Maybe there are other businesses or other partners that, that are aligned with your business. You know, For example, it's not uncommon for um, beauty and massage salons to collaborate together. Maybe there's a, a trusted colleague that you can um, join up with and cross promote and um, keep top of mind together. Or maybe you're a cleaning business um, and, and you can offer your services to the construction and remodeling companies that are doing all this work and have a contract to clean up um, when they're finished so that their crew can move on and they don't have to dedicate the time doing all that final detail clean. And at the same time, you get introduced to a new property owner that may be a new source of revenue for you. So think creatively about how you might be able to partner with other businesses. But the bottom line is, do you have a plan? You know, if, if we can, if we at, listen to people like Elon Musk, at least as he's preparing and zigging and zag, 
zagging the zig, if you will. Is there something to that that you might want to um, build on for yourself and your own company? You know, when the pandemic showed up, um, we had many of us, not all of us, but many of us had um, the demand for our products and services just shut down. It just tanked to zero. The rug was completely pulled out from, from under us and we had zero warning. We were caught flat-footed um, and we had to adapt quickly. quickly. It was like the recession with no warning whatsoever, but this is different. This is different. We can predict this shift in the market as we were watching what's happening at the grocery store and what's happening at the gas pump. We can't predict how long or how deep a re this recession will be. At least I certainly can't. There are some economists that can, can do a worthy um, college try at it, but the bottom line is we don't know but we can be proactive this time. In fact, we can actually think about what we learned in the pandemic if we faced that harsh shutdown and what did or did not, what we did or did not do that helped us. And maybe there are things that we should have done or we should have done faster in 2020 that we can learn from and use today to um, protect ourselves and to take action now. So what I really encourage you to do is call a timeout, think about this and how Maslow's hierarchy of needs and those industry implications might apply to your world. Talk about it with your team, not to scare them, but to prepare and kind of come back shoulder to shoulder and craft, craft your plan. Craft your plan. So that brings us to our conversation today. I hope that was helpful to get the juices flowing and your thinking going on this particular topic. I do want to let you know about um, some of, uh, speaking of preparing, I do wanna let you know about our Get a Grip workshops. And that is all about preparing you and your business uh, and understanding how the value of your business, if you're a business owner or an aspiring uh, business owner, how the value of your business actually weaves together with your wealth um, plan and your financial security. Get a Grip is a seven week program there are great little vignette um, uh, videos that you watch and then once a week you come together with like-minded business owners and my colleagues, Ray and Kelly, to talk through the material that was shared. Um, we, we get together and we talk about it and really um, explore what it means to have a grip on the value of your business and how you can grow it. So I'm going to share the screen one last time so that you can actually um, see the QR code. If you snap the QR code, that will take you to our workshop pages and you can focus on Get a Grip. And I wanted to announce that for the, the next class is coming up on July 6th. That's when it starts. And for the, the July program, I love the w, uh, WW Win Win Women community so much. I am offering a 10% discount on the July class. So the coupon code for that is Get Ready 10. So check it out. I think you will like what you find. So thank you for joining us um, on today's show. We really enjoy having you and we enjoy getting and reading your questions, your thoughts and comments at uh, our special exit stage right email, which is esr at providencehill.com. So send us your thoughts, ideas, and questions. And know that exit stage right, it, this is where we talk about ways that you can build, buy, and sell your business so you can exit stage right into your next adventure and meet your financial goals. I am Martha Sullivan, and I have a really good feeling about this. Go and transform your business and exit stage right.